Have you ever wondered what it would feel like to play the power fantasy of Hawkeye or Legolas or any sort of cyber assassin who's just pure deadly precision? Well, in this video, we're going to cover, honestly, one of my favorite builds that I haven't talked about in a while, and that is the Prismatic Oath Keepers build. So if you want to see more, then be sure as always to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll leave a dim link in the description for you to take advantage of. So let's get straight to it. One of the main factors and big reasons why I love Destiny 2 so much is the bows and the variety of bows we have to choose from. Personally, for me, I love the way that bows are utilized. It really does enable you to play the power fantasy, as I mentioned, of you know the cyber assassin, cyber ninja, playing from afar, being more defensive in your playstyle, more tactical, cerebral even. And so this blueprint really revolves around that. It really revolves around playing from a distance. Now, granted, you can play offensively with this build and you can really make it as flexible as you would like to. But in, in this case, playing more defensively really gives you more opportunity to kind of see the playing field from a greater perspective because you're the one now, you're like, again, you're the cyber ninja, you're, you're stalking your prey even. So the star of the show here is of course Oathkeeper. So what does Oathkeeper do? Oathkeeper states by adamantine brace, bow charges can be held indefinitely. Gain a bonus to the bow's damage when released based on how long the charge is held and provides a moderate benefit to the airborne effectiveness stat of bows. Now, the most important thing here is, of course, the additional damage you receive. And that, to me, plays a big role in how you can really utilize this build effectively. Now, according to the gauntlet itself, it states that full draws grant the adamantine brace. This allows perfect draws to be held indefinitely, and it grants a 37.5 increased damage against PvE combatants for every 0.5 seconds you hold a perfect draw up to a 100%, 150% sorry, increase. And more importantly here, it states that the PvE damage buff only affects the initial impact damage and expires after four seconds of adamantine brace being active. Leviathan's breath is unfortunately not able to receive the damage increase, which is only fair. But the point is, is that you have a great variety of tools to choose from in your bow category and being able to make use of the power that you get, the infinite bow charge and the additional bow damage is really critical. And you'll likely see the damage increase over time because now when you implement things like Prismatic and your Hunter's Journal into the mix, you're gonna start to see a lot of damage numbers uh, really, really skyrocket for bows, surprisingly enough. So that being said, we're gonna jump into the weapon selection that being bows and we're going to discuss things like perks and what to look out for moving forward let's get into it one major reason why i love oath keepers so much is because it's exclusively tied to bows which means that a lot of your mental energy is tied only to bows and thus saving you all this additional time having to think about different weapons and how they combine in this case you can just combine two bows and then look at the respective perks to see which of those perks will really synergize with the entire build. So I'm going to go off and mention some really notable choices as far as bow options. Of course, the quintessential Wish Ender is one of the best in the game, and that's because it deals so well with barrier champions, which can be really annoying. But when you tie that with Oath Keeper, you're doing more damage output alongside your hunter's journal with your radiant orbs you're going to always be picking up orbs constantly which means you're going to always have radiant and thus more damage down the road another great option and one of my all-time favorites is lemon aka Le Monarch. and that's just because it deals well with overload champions and its poison arrow spread to other respective enemies around you and that can be really really nice and if you have the actual catalyst which is basically unrelenting every time you get rapid precision kills you're healing yourself so that can really add to your survivability in the build itself and then of course we have leviathan's breath leviathan's breath is awesome and now of course as we mentioned earlier the caveat is that it does not take advantage of the respective outgoing outgoing damage increase but it deals so well with unstoppable champions and its damage already is pretty solid 
when you tie that with your radiant orbs you're going to be getting bonus damage anyway so nevertheless leviathan's breath is an awesome awesome option other notable ones that i love tq divination fantastic trinity ghoul another great option as far as legendary ones you have the pre astanac which is really good right now you have the new one the new void bow the fortunate star which comes with some pretty cool perks which we'll get into right now so perk wise what are we looking for on a bow well since we're all about sharp shooting all about precision we're looking for things that are going to give us that value so things like precision instrument that's going to be a, a very very important one to look out for the new bow fortunate star comes with a kill clip that can be another awesome option to, to utilize on a bow archer's tempo what does that do archer's tempo draw time decreases after every precision hit this turns you into an actual sniper on the battlefield because you're just going to be drawing your bow consistently very quickly and also one thing that i love is slice as i've always mentioned before in previous videos slice is really fantastic right now because it reduces that damage output from enemies by 40 percent thus making you more defensive on the battlefield and you tie that with other respective parts of your build let's say if you're going with arc you have your galvanic armor and woven mail for example all these things tie in together and really make this build really great so things like trinity ghoul can be good for building your amplified pre astanax can be good for incandescent which is again another great perk to have also i recommend looking out for things like vanguard's vindication as far as origin traits since final blows of this weapon grant a small amount of health that's always nice to have and just yeah be mindful of what respective perks come with those exotic bows and that way you can really try to min max and optimize to your to your best abilities but those are the ones that i really wanted to point out as far as perks you really want to have something with precision on it so precision instrument is really really good things like perhaps even tunnel visions nice adaptive munitions can always be really really good as a, an additional bonus there uh, you just have a lot of utility so so long as you have something that's damaging like swashbuckler that's also another one that you can think about in your mind uh, just think of think of bows that can help you to do more damage but also to give you more accuracy as well when you're aiming down sights dragonfly another awesome option as well golden tricorn too so that being said let's move on into the last part which will explain the mods artifacts and much more so i wanted to mention one important benefit with this build and it's that you don't have to worry about ammunition with of course the exception of leviathan's breath being a heavy ammo dependent bow everything else is pretty much non-existent in terms of ammunition which is great it gives you a greater degree of freedom when it comes to just playing the build and you don't have to stress about things which means you can actually implement more creative options into your mods for your armor that being said let's jump into our abilities aspects and fragments why i've chosen them and why they can be a great use down the road first things first of course none other than the shadow shot deadfall being our, our number one super here and that's just because it plays perfectly into the bow fantasy shadow shot deadfall is great as it weakens and suppresses targets it traps them allowing you to take advantage of things like incandescent from your bows volt shots you know repulsor brace destabilizing rounds slice all these different things you can make use of deadfall is really really good for all of that next up as far as abilities we have both the threaded spike and grapple now because we are playing into this cyber assassin fantasy threaded spike is really good here as it helps us to stay at that healthy range we don't have to overcommit and do anything that we don't need to and it helps to proc stylus executioner really really quickly thus allowing us to reposition and move around with a little bit more carefree uh, a more carefree feel Grapple, of course, as we already know, one of my all-time favorites as far as abilities. And it just allows for you to move around, again, stay out of harm's way. Or if you want to play a little bit more aggressively and go for that big, you know, 
punch at the end, you can definitely use that as well. Executioner, really, really good aspect here. Again, you want to be able to try and maneuver around enemies, reposition yourself, especially in the higher end content, like a GM run, if you're doing solo content, or let's say you're soloing dungeons. Having Executioner is really, really good here, as it does allow for you to just escape any pressure, and once again, allows for you to get around the map with a little bit more ease. Winter Shroud pairs well with that since you can slow enemies down it builds into your class ability as well but more importantly it does help to stun overload champions which can be really useful if you're not rocking with let's say an overload bow next fragments as always got to talk about the facet of protection and the reason is just because if you are surrounded by targets you want to be able to take as little damage as you possibly can and you pair that with other respective elements like slice as i mentioned earlier in the video galvanic armor void over shields so many different things can work alongside facet of protection to keep you alive for a lot longer and so that's of great use next up facet of dawn states that powered melee hits against targets makes you radiant powered melee final blows makes you and your nearby allies really radiant so this is great too because we're going to be making use of our Thudded Spike quite predominantly, and thus we're going to always have the ability to go Radiant just pretty much almost infinitely. So all, all of your, your shots with your bow are going to hit pretty hard, and you tie that with your respective buff from the Adamantine Brace in your Oath Keepers, and you can see just how much potential this, this build has. Next, we have Facet of Awakening. Again, one of my favorites here, and that's just because with the multitude of different options we have in terms of bows, we'll be able to mix and match whatever pickups we'd like to actually utilize. Most importantly, tangles are really nice, which is why I tend to rock with strand bows a lot, just because you do get more tangles on the field, which can really be useful. And everything else really comes down to what you're looking for. If you want more melee energy, you can go for stasis. If you want more void breaches, or at least class ability energy, go for the void breach. If you want more ability energy in general, go for the ionic trace. And if you want grenade energy, go for the fire sprite. All of them are really good options to have. Again, it all depends on what you're looking for and how you can mix and match to your liking. Next up is Facet of Solitude, another great option to have if you do love Strand, and that's just because Facet of Solitude states that landing rapid precision hits emits a severing blast from the target, and while transcendent, the severing blast is bigger. This is really great as it ties well into your art or artifact mod, which is the Thudded Blast, which means that your AoE blast is going to be bigger, but also you're going to be severing, severing targets as well. Uh, so long as you're, you know, landing rapid precision hits, which is pretty good. And then Facet of Purpose will be picking up over shields because we are rocking with the Deadfall. But it's still good nevertheless, because if you are rocking things like Repulsor Brace, you will always have an overshield available. So playing to that strategy of survivability, this is pretty much what the build is about. It's playing from a distance and surviving for longer periods of time, thus giving you a little bit more of an advantage over the enemy. Next up, we're going to go into our armor mods, starting with the helmet. Now, as I mentioned earlier, because we don't have to worry so much about ammunition, we can rock other things like our siphons. So here we have the harmonic siphon with our void orb of power. Then we have Solar Siphon as well as Strand Siphon, which means that we could, you can be collecting a lot of siphons in this build, which is going to be great. Next up, we have Heavy Handed two times, and that's just because we're going to be using a lot of our Thetted Spike, and that's going to give us a lot more orbs for us to utilize and thus play into that bow fantasy a lot more and help us to build into our super a lot faster too. Then we have our Chest Armor, and right now we have Concussive Dampener and Charged Up. Charged Up I like to use a lot just because of the extra armor charge. The more we pick up in terms of our orbs, this extends the duration and time that we get to utilize things like Radiant and other means when it comes to our abilities. So Charged Up is really nice. The extra armor charge is really, really good down the road. And then next for Leg Armor, we've got All Damage. So Strain Weapon Surge, Solar Weapon Surge, 
and Void Weapon Surge. Now, mind you, this can all change depending on what you're looking for. You can go for maybe a stasis weapon charge or whatever the case is, depending, again, on what you like. In my case, I love Strand and I love Solar, and Void is just a nice added benefit, especially with things like Leviathan's Breath. This is good since now, once again, you can funnel all of your attention into damage output, which then ties well into the Oath Keeper itself alongside you being Radiance almost infinitely due to your Thudded Spike, as well as picking up orbs on the fly. And then lastly, we have the Hunter Cloak itself, and I have Reaper alongside Time Dilation. So this just makes sure that the time is decayed, so therefore you have a little bit more extra leeway to work with when it comes to your respective armor charge. And so now we're going to jump into the Hunter's Journal. Now, because we are rocking with bows, much of this is going to be somewhat irrelevant, but I'm going to talk about the more important ones. First off, Radiant Orbs, as I mentioned, is going to be really, really impactful since giving you, or since obtaining this as far as an Orb of Power is going to make you Radiant. That's going to be really vital since that's going to pair well with your Facet, which also gives you Radiant for every melee kill. So always... Making sure you have Radiant optimized is always going to be vital here. Next up, of course, is Galvanic Armor. So long as we're amplified, we're going to be a tank on the battlefield. So if you're rocking things like a Void Arrow or Void Bow, for example, let's say Trinity Ghoul or just a Legendary option, Point of the Stag, for example, this is really great to have. And then Solar Fulmination, great too, because this is for Ignitions. So therefore, if I have Incandescent, this is going to do more damage and then increase radius. And then that's pretty much it. And then Shield Crush is also good too, since your melee recharges faster and deals increased damage. And then of course, if I'm Amplified or Radiant, my grenade recharges faster and deals increased damage. So Shield Crush, Radiant Orbs, Galvanic Armor, Solar Fulmination, Fetid Blast, of course, as I mentioned, as well as Creeping Chill. This is also pretty good down the road. Again, everything else is pretty much nothing to be focused on unless of course you're really into you know the saints inspiration or winning hand but for the most part the ones i mentioned are going to be your quintessential go-to options for this particular build and thus helping you to do more damage and stay alive for a lot longer so all in all that covers the options for the oath keeper build i do hope this video has helped you and inspired you in some way to perhaps try it out the dim link, once again, will be in the description. And if you would like to become a member of the community, by all means, press that join button. It'll be very helpful to me as far as my full-time content creation is concerned. I appreciate that. Of course, like, comment, and subscribe. That also helps the channel and the videos down the road. So that being said, New Warriors, thank you again for tuning in. As always, stay strong, keep fighting, and may the force be with you all always. Take care and see you again very soon. Peace.